welcome you in. I welcome you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Let's begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for who you are, what you have done for us, Lord. Lord, we thank you that you are the most high God. You are the Lord who healeth thee. We thank you, Lord. We love you because you first loved us. Thank you for commending your love towards us. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We thank you, God, in your presence there's the fullness of joy, and at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Lord, we commit this meeting into your wonderful hands, Lord. Lord, we ask you to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ask or think. Lord, I pray that you'll cover us with your blood, Lord. Protect us from dangers, seen and unseen, Lord. In the name of Jesus, bless your people. I pray in the name of Jesus that you'll meet every need over and above, God, that your people will have all sufficiency for all things and do abound to all good works. Lord, I pray that people's needs will be met through this meeting and through all other gospel meetings that are taking place today or that will take place in the future, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that you will heal your people, those who are in need of healing, that they will be healed, God, and made whole, God. We thank you, Lord, that nothing is too hard for you, Lord. Lord, we pray, Lord, that blind eyes will open, God. We pray the deaf will hear, Lord. We pray the lame will walk, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, above all, we pray that those who are not saved will be safe today, God, through the preaching of your work throughout the world, God. And those who will listen at a later date, dear Lord, that the anointing will be strong on this word, God, that they will be saved, God. We thank you and we praise you for it, God. Perfect that which concerns your people, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for an increase of your anointing on my life, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, that your perfect will be done in this meeting. May I be always be led, controlled, and guided by your wonderful Holy Spirit because we need you, Lord. All our help comes from the Lord. So we thank you and we praise you for hearing and answering our prayers. We thank you in advance for those who are saved, who will be healed, who will be delivered because of this word going forth like a sharp to edges sword. Lord, we pray for the correct viewing audience, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray you'll go before me and soften their hearts. Make hearts make hearts of stone in the hearts of flesh. Deliver your people from evil. Deliver them from the evil one. For this purpose was God, was Jesus, manifested that he may destroy the works of the devil. We pray every work of the devil, devil will be completely destroyed, nullified, brought to naught. And your will, God, your perfect will alone be done on earth as it is in heaven. And the church says, Amen and Amen. So I welcome you again for another live Facebook meeting, which will later be um, put on YouTube. And today I will be ministering on receive your healing. Receive your healing. Why? Why? Some of might be thinking, why, Pastor Pamela, why are you ministering on receive your healing? Because it's already done. God has already healed us by his stripes. Hallelujah. Because he was wounded for our transgressions. Jesus the lovely one, the perfect one, the holy one, the sinless one was he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. Praise God. We are and we were healed. Who is own self, First Peter 2, 24 tells us, who is own self, bear our sins in his own body on the tree. That we being dead to sins. Who is this with me? Me, you, and I, whosoever. Being dead to sins should live on to righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. And God sent his word and he healed our diseases because he is the Lord that healed thee. He is the Lord with whom all things are possible. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the Acts 10, 38 God who went about. He went about. So he went everywhere doing good, healing those who were oppressed and harassed of the devil for God was with him. And I'm here to tell you that God is a wonderful savior. He's a wonderful healer. He's a wonderful deliverer. And he is here to make you free. And he who the son sets free is free indeed. Hallelujah. And there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Praise God. So if you're you're in some pain today, praise God. If you're in agony today, if you are afraid today, praise God. If you're in lack, you're operating under the spirit of death. Praise God. And God 
God has delivered us from the spirit of death. Praise God. And he who the sun sets free is free indeed. So I'm here to tell you to exercise your freedom and be made whole in the name of Jesus. I send the word and I command you to be healed by the stripes of Jesus. No good thing <laughs> will God, our lovely Savior, withhold from those who walk uprightly. Praise the name of Jesus. We'll quickly turn to our key scripture, which is found in James chapter 4. Praise the name. Sorry, James chapter 5, verse 14. Praise the name of Jesus. And if I switch our um, translations, I will let you know. I'll be reading from the Amplified Version of the Bible. James chapter 5, verse 14. And as by the name of the book, James, you'll probably already assume that it was authored by James. Praise God. Thank God for the wonderful apostle James. Hallelujah. The wonderful man of God. We give God honor and we give God glory. And we thank God for the wisdom and revelation knowledge that he had from the word today. And the, the uh, word of God is still working today. The word is excellent to save. The word is excellent to heal. The word is excellent to deliver. It's excellent to set free. For the word of God is life and health and healing to all our flesh. And it never fails. Praise God. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is the covenant keeping God who keeps his covenant and he never breaks his covenant. Praise God. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will never fail. So we give God honor and we give God glory. I was in the wrong book. No wonder I wasn't seeing my scripture. <laughs> James 5 verse 14. And this is James speaking. And he is asking a simple question. Is any among you sick? Praise the name of Jesus. He says, is any among you sick? Why is he asking that question? Because um, he's not used to being among sickness all the time. He wasn't expecting people to be sick. But just in case they were sick, he is asking, is any among you sick? Because he knows the Lord that he let be. He knows the Lord with whom all things are possible. And he was ready to let the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, our Alpha and Omega, the one who never lost the patient, praise God, the one who is beautiful for every situation, the one in whose presence there's the fullness of joy and at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore, the faithful one, the wonderful God, the abundantly good God, the God with whom all things are possible, praise God is able to make you whole and he wanted people to be healed and to make whole that's why james asked the question just in case because sickness was not the norm with james praise the name of jesus but just in case there was just one person who was sick you know he wanted to make them whole praise god for them to receive their healing it is just like um because it's just like many times we give an uh, um and also call for salvation, you know, because we get together as the saints and we are in church, one with another, serving the Lord with gladness, coming into his presence with singing, entering his courts with praise. And the uh, pastor may give an altar call and he says, uh, is anyone unsafe? Praise God. Hallelujah. And then he may um, repeat the sinner's prayer and he says, uh, say this prayer after me. Once you believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth that Jesus died on the cross and God rose him up from the third day, you shall be saved because confession is made with that, made with the mouth, praise God and believe with the heart. Praise the name of Jesus, hallelujah. So um, James was asking the simple question because he wanted people to, to get healed. You know, it, it was like, um, it wasn't like in the days in Jesus's ministry, Praise the name of Jesus. He, he, he said to his disciples, because the woman, she had the alabaster box of precious ointment. I was told this was a year's wages. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So she had worked hard and she had earned that wages. Praise God. Whether she had earned it in a, um, a wrongful way, a disgusting manner. But she, she repented and she was saved, praise God. And it was her savings, praise the name of Jesus. And she broke the alabaster box and anointed Jesus for his funeral. 
praise the name of Jesus with that precious ointment. And then the disciples were saying, oh, what a waste of this precious ointment. It could have been sold and given to the poor. Praise God. But Jesus wisely opened his mouth. Praise God. Because whenever Jesus opened his mouth, wisdom came out. Praise God. Healing flowed. Signs and wonders followed everything that he said. Praise God. The blind was able to see. Praise God. The deaf was able to hear. The dead were raised up. Praise God. The unsaved were saved because wherever Jesus went, miracles occurred. Praise God. And whatever he said, it was so. He only said the things that the Father told him to say. He only did the things that he saw the Father do. He was the express image of God on earth. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus stooped so low, as the Bible tells us in Philippians 2, even unto the death of the cross, that he has been highly, highly, everybody say highly, he has been highly exalted, praise God, and given the name that is above every name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. So the name of Jesus is high above whatever disease you may be having, because it's not even your disease, praise God. The name of Jesus is a name that is high above cancer. It's higher than AIDS, praise God. It's higher than heart disease, praise the name of Jesus. It's higher than Reno's disease, praise God. It's higher above kidney disease. It's higher above heart failure. You apply that name of Jesus to that disease, and that disease will have to bow its, its knees to the name of Jesus, and you will have to be made whole because he was the sun sets free is free indeed and it's not by might it's not by power but by my spirit says the lord and god is a wonderful spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth so we give god honor and we give god glory so healing is a part of the atonement it's the part of the believer's rights so will you be made whole today because as a man think it in his heart so is he if you see yourself sick weak, defeated, never well, always in pain it will be. So as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So you have to renew your, your mind with the word of God and think on things as Paul tells us in Philippians 4, 6, 4, well, Philippians 4 anyway, 7, I believe it is, or somewhere around there. Things that are true, things that are honest, things that are just, things that are pure, things that are lovely, things that have a good report, and if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, those are the things that you have to think on. And those things that you've seen and heard him say, practice and do. He all tells the people to follow me as I follow Christ. If he was not following Christ, you don't follow him. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, Science follows believers, praise God. So if you're believing for nothing, no signs are going to be following for you, following you. But if you believe that you're healed by the stripes of Jesus, praise God, hallelujah, it will happen. If you believe you're a miracle waiting to happen, it will happen because you have to speak your faith because faith without works is dead, praise God. And it's not by might, it's not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. But Jesus says, heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, freely as you receive, freely shall you give. So as um the poor, Jesus said to um the disciples, you always have the poor, because when the woman, she broke their alabaster box and she anointed Jesus with the, the uh, precious ointment or fume, preparing him for his funeral, they said, what a waste of money. But Jesus says, you always have the poor with you, but you don't always have have me with you. Praise God. And this thing shall be recorded in the Bible as a memorial for everyone who reads the Bible. They will remember what this woman did. She was, she was forgiven much. Praise the name of Jesus. She loved much. Praise God. If you're forgiven a little, you might love a little. You may be just a little bit passionate about God. Praise God. But if God has delivered you from, um, if you were like a drug dealer, praise God. You were a murderer. You were a whore. You were a fornicator. Praise God. You were a killer. Praise the name of Jesus. You were one of the most filthy, horrible people in the earth. Consider the scum of the earth. Praise God. When you get born again, you will love much. Praise the name of Jesus. You will be passionate about the things of God. Praise the name of Jesus because Jesus has forgiven you much. Praise God. Hallelujah. You will want to lead others to the kingdom of God and see many more people forgiven, set free because you want what God has done for you. He will do for others and you want that done to others. Praise God. Because if you've been forgiven much, you will love much. Praise God. You will pray much. Praise God. Because when you, when you love, 
Love never fails. Praise the name of Jesus. So when you love much, you will forgive much. You will pray much. Praise the name of Jesus. You do the will of the Father. You'll probably do lots of fasting and prayer. Praise the name of Jesus. Interceding on behalf of the unsaved and on behalf of the body of Christ. God's consecrated people because we are God's ambassadors. He is making his appeal through us on this earth. So we give God honor and we give God glory. We bless and we magnify our wonderful Lord and Savior. So um, the sickness was not the norm in um, James's ministry. Everyone was not um, always sick. So as poverty was the norm in Jesus's ministry, when Jesus said, you always have the poor with you. So um, James was saying, is any sick among you? And then he goes on to say, let them call for the elders of the church. Praise God, so that they can anoint them with oil. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise them up. Praise the name of Jesus. The Lord that healed thee, the Lord who sent his word and healed our diseases, he will raise him up. And he says, confess your faults one to another and pray that you may be healed. The fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Praise God. And Elijah, praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He, he was a, he prayed fervent heartfelt prayers. One time he prayed that it will not rain, praise God, and it didn't rain for three years and a half, three and a half years it didn't rain. And then he prayed that the rain will fall, praise the name of Jesus, and then the rain came, praise God, hallelujah. So we thank God for rain, we thank God for sunny days, we thank him for dry days, we thank him for wet days, we thank him for snowy days, praise God. Because God is beautiful for every situation. Praise the name of Jesus. So um, James, the wonderful uh, man of God, he goes on in James 5, 14. Is any among you sick? So he's asking a simple question. He wants it to be answered truthfully because many people are sick and the pastor gives the altar calls to come up so he can lay hands on them and they'll recover. And many people just sit down. So they come to church with their sickness and go home with their sickness. So we bind the spirit of disobedience and we lose the spirit of obedience in the name of Jesus. I repent there's been times when I've been disobedient to the spirit of God and I haven't obeyed. But help us, Lord, we ask you to help us to be willing and obedient and eat the good of the land. Help us to grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby we are sealed unto the day of redemption. So we give God honor and we give God glory. So he goes on to say, is any among you sick? He should call in the church of elders, the spiritual guides, and they should pray over him, anointing him with oil in the Lord's name. Praise God. So he gave some simple instruction so that people could receive their healing. Praise the name of Jesus. So you would have these um, faithful men and women of God who are elders of the church. And they will pray over him in faith, the prayer of faith. They will pray the fervent, heartfelt prayer, like exactly like what Elijah prayed when he prayed up. There will be no rain, and it didn't rain for three and a half years because he's, he's putting all his faith into it. He's praying like if you, you're praying for your own child, praise God. You're praying for your mother. You're praying for your father. You're praying for your husband, praise God. And you really, really want them to live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. So you use your faith because if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you will say to this to come my tree, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and it shall be so. Praise the name of Jesus. You will speak to the dead. Praise the name of Jesus. Whether they're spiritually dead, praise God, financially dead, praise the name of Jesus. And you will say to that person who is physically dead, rise up and walk in the name of Jesus and it will be so. Like when we had the um, blind man, not the blind man, the lame man in Acts chapter 3 who sat at their beautiful gate, praise the name of Jesus, waiting to beg for alms. Praise the name of Jesus. And he looked expectantly at Peter uh, and um, he was expected to receive a gift. He was expected to, to receive arms. Thank God he was using his faith. But what he received that day, praise God, was more than arms. Because Peter said, silver and gold have I, have I none, but such as I have. Because he knew the spirit of God <coughs> excuse me, that raised Jesus from the dead dwells on the inside of him. And he knew that he had the power of the Holy Spirit abiding in him. Because when you receive the when you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive power. 
Praise the name of Jesus. He says, silver and gold have I none, have I none. But such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus. Praise God. In the powerful name of Jesus. In the awesome name of Jesus. In the excellent name of Jesus. The name that cannot fail. The name that changes things. That makes all wrong things right. Hallelujah. The name that at the name of Jesus, demons tremble. Praise God. At the name of Jesus, the lame walk, the blind see, the deaf hear. Praise God, the dumb speak in the name, the precious name of Jesus, the perfect name of Jesus, the delivering name of Jesus, the victorious name of Jesus, the righteous name of Jesus, the perfect name of Jesus, the holy name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You will rise up and walk. And he spoke to the guy and he rose up and he walked. So James knew God as the Lord that he led thee. So that's why he says, is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil and the prayer of faith. James knew how to pray the prayer of faith. It will save the sick and, Lord, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he's committed any sins, it shall be forgiven him. Many people come up for the healing, but they don't confess their faults one to another. And the Bible clearly instructs us to confess our faults one to another. That's why we need to be trustworthy. God, help us. There have been times when we've all, I believe, divulged a secret when we shouldn't have. When we've all spoken when we shouldn't have. And I ask you, God, to forgive us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We ask you to put a watch over our mouth, over our tongue, that we will only say the right thing. Because who can tame the tongue? None. But God, but we thank God for the blood of Jesus. Save our tongues, God, in the name of Jesus, because God hates a tailbearer. Hallelujah. And he who brings discord among the brethren. So they should, hallelujah. So let's reread verse 14. Is any among you sick? <laughs> he should call in the church elders, the spiritual guides, and they should pray over him, anointing him with oil in the Lord's name. So someone might be saying, why oil? Oil represents the Holy Spirit. When people were anointed, they would anoint them with oil. Oil would be smeared over probably their foreheads, their heads, and things like that, you know. Hallelujah. Unity commands the blessings of God, even life forevermore. Praise the name of Jesus. So um, they'll be anointed. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. So you pray for people like if you're praying for yourself, you're praying for your mom, your dad, you're praying for someone who you really love and you really want them to be healed. Like the centurion, you know, he um, sent some elders to um, Jesus and he said, uh, come over to my home, you know, because my um, servant, you know, he is previously ill at the point of death. And then after, when they're about to approach Jesus, then he sent them and sent some other people and he says, don't even bother come to my house, but just speak the word and my servant shall be made whole. And in the self same hour, his servant was made whole. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We give God honor and we give God glory. We find the story in Mark chapter five, where we had the woman, she had an issue of blood for 12 years. She was virtually, basically ble bleeding to death. And she had gone to all the, the the physicians, the best physicians. She spent all that she had. She was a wealthy woman, praise God. And she became poverty stricken. And instead of getting better, you know, after spending all this money, spending all this time, all this time with these physicians, the best physicians, you know, praise the name of Jesus. Instead of getting better, she got worse. How disappointed she must have been. You know, this could have made her sad. It could have made her bitter. It could have made her um, distressed. It could have made her given up on the Lord, praise God. But she still trusted the Lord. Someone told her that Jesus was in town uh, and she um, risked her life because in those days, women who were um, bleeding, praise God, she was unclean and she could have been stoned to death, praise God. She was put in the same category as a leper who, if he was coming out in public and it wasn't saying unclean, unclean, so that people could um, clear the path, get away from them. Praise the name, they could be stoned to death. So she could have been stoned to death. Praise the name. But she heard that Jesus is the Lord that he let be. Praise God. She knew him as the Lord who's the same yesterday, today, and forever. She knew him as the Acts 1038 God, as James knew. Jesus as the Acts 1038 God, who went about doing good. 
He went about doing good, so healing is good. Healing is wonderful. Healing is life. Healing is health. Healing is protection. Healing is a part of our covenant. Praise God. Healing is a part of victory. Praise the name of Jesus. Healing is a part of our well-being. So oh, this woman who had the issue of blood, praise God, and James knew God as the Lord that he let thee, praise God. They knew him as the God who never fails, praise God, because the things that are impossible with man are possible with God. And so she, she risked her life, you know, she went out in the crowds, she pushed her way through, she crawled her way through the crowds, she risked even being um, stampede to death, but she kept going and she kept going and her faith kept growing stronger and stronger because she kept saying, if I may touch but the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Praise the name of Jesus. And she touched but the hem of his garment and Jesus felt, he felt that virtue had gone out from him. Praise the name of Jesus. And at this point, he, he didn't have the um, word of knowledge at that particular time. He, he didn't know who it was that touched him because he didn't just ask who touched my garment. Praise God. Because he knew virtue, the power of God, the um, raising from the dead power had gone out of him. And he said, who touched? <laughs> touched me. Praise God. And the woman fearing and trembling, she came and she told him how she'd had this issue of blood for 12 years. She spent all she had and she told him the whole story and she touched his garment. Praise God, and she was healed. And Jesus said, Thy faith hath made thee whole. So without faith, it's impossible to please God. And those who come to him must believe, he must believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So are you going to seek the Lord today? Are you going to seek him while he may be found? Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked man forsake his unrighteous ways and turn to God, and God will abundantly pardon you. It's not too late for you to be saved. You're not too bad to be saved. Praise God. Just call upon the name of the Lord. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. So run into daddy's arms today and be saved. Because for God so loved the world that he gave, he gave, he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So healing is a part of the atonement. Praise God. He sent this word and heals all our diseases. You can find that and heal their diseases. You can find that in Psalm 107 verse 20. So back to James 5 verse 15 and the prayer that is of faith. So when we pray, Mark 11 24, let's go there quickly. Please hold your place in James 5. When we pray, we have to believe. We have to have confidence in the word of God that it will work. And God is the word, because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and all things that were made were made of God, and without him, there was nothing made that was made. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we use everything that we have in this world. It is uh, created by the word of God, because we use materials to make things. We didn't invent anything from scratch. Even the thoughts of the inventions, it all came from God. So, um, Let's read from verse 22, actually. Jesus replied and said to them, have faith in God constantly. See, he's saying, have the God kind of faith. Believe me always, praise God. Believe that you're healed by the stripes of Jesus. Believe that what God did for the woman who had the issue of blood, that he will do it for you. Because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. No good thing, no good thing will God withhold from those who walk uprightly. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. He's saying, have God kind faith. And Jesus replied and said to them, have faith in God constantly. Truly, without the shadow of a doubt, I tell you, whosoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it can be a literal mountain, praise God, it can be a physical mountain, something that's in your way, you know, you might be driving, there may be a tree, there's something obstructing your way and you want it. You need it to be supernaturally removed so you, you so it could be a, a decision between life and death and you can speak to that mountain in faith, that tree, that blockage, something that's trying to prevent you from uh, fulfilling the ministry call that God has given you, the call of God on your life. Praise God. Whether it's people who are coming against you, praise the name of Jesus. Whether it's people coming against your marriage, that, that can be a mountain. Praise God. Whether it's a mountain of doubt and unbelief spoken over you, praise God. Whether it was generational curses spoken over you, you can see 
speak to that mountain and once you're born again the generational curses are broken but you have to believe praise God so you can act out your faith because if you don't believe you're gonna act like a weak defeated person when Christ has already delivered us from the kingdom of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son where when he has already provided all our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus praise God the battle has already been won praise God and this is the victory that overcome the world even our faith we thank God the greater one lives on the inside of us for greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world the wonderful one lives in the inside of us the one with whom all things are possible lives on the inside of us the exceedingly good God God is wonderful to save he's wonderful to heal he's wonderful to deliver he's wonderful to set free he even has a repetition of interrupting funerals and raising the dead as we find that in Luke chapter 7 where Jesus raised the widow woman from the dead praise God he raised Lazarus from the dead you can find that in John chapter 11 so he says he speak to this mountain be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt it at all in his heart but believes that what he says will take place it shall be done for him so um, when we pray, what things when we desire, when we pray, believe we receive them. For this reason, I'm telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe, trust, and be confident that it is granted to you and you will get it. And then he goes on to say, when you pray, you believe, you know. Give us this day our trespasses and forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. So some people are running blindly into temptation, but we can pray before. Because temptation will come, it's not coming from God, but we can deliver us from all evil. Lead us not into temptation. Help us not to fall into the hands of the devil. Praise God. Hallelujah. Again, you'd rather serve God, praise God, than to fall into the hands of man. Praise God. David was King David was always glad to come into the house of God. So we need to serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. So um, Jesus was um, anointed with the Holy Spirit. So we all, you know, we are followers of Christ. Ephesians 5, 1 says to imitate God as beloved children imitate their father. So Jesus was anointed before he, he began his public ministry. We need to be anointed by the Holy Spirit and be filled with the Holy Spirit before we begin our public ministry because the servant is not greater than his Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Many people want the power, but they don't want to receive the Holy Spirit. They want to, they want to acknowledge the Holy Spirit that he's the third part of the Trinity. Many people shut up, shut up, you know, when they hear about speaking in tongues, gift of faith, word of wisdom, you know, interpretation of tongues, gift of discernment. Praise the name of Jesus. They don't want to know, but they want to know the power. Praise God. But if you don't, if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, you're not going to have a full revelation of the power. Your ministry will not be um, completely perfected. Praise the name of Jesus. Every time you minister, sometimes you may get some, a few people may be born again. Some people may um, receive healing. But if, if you're not believing God for it, praise the name of Jesus, and you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, you wouldn't have uh, make as great as an impact as God wants you to have, you know, in Acts chapter 3. Praise the name of Jesus. That church was on fire when um, people were able to... Uh, 3,000 people were added to the church in that same day, in that church service, you know. They, people were in a hurry. Oh, I've got to rush and get my rice and peas and my chicken. Oh, I've got to um, get my son ready for his football match. Oh, um, I can't come up today. I'm too tired or whatever. People were in love with the Lord and on fire and wanting the will of God. Hence, the church was prepared. They had those outfits because I don't think ever, those 3,000 people, all of them came in a change of clothing and all these things knowing that they were going to be baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. Praise God. So three people were adding on to the church in the book of Acts chapter 3. Praise God. And all of them were baptized in the same day. What an organized church. Dear Lord, help us to be organized. I need to be more organized. We need your help, Lord. We need your help all the time. Praise God. So um, James, the great apostle, James, praise God. He knew God. Praise God as the... Um, Lord, that he let thee. He knew him as the Acts 10 38 God who went about doing good and healing all who were harassed and oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He, he knew Jesus as the Lord who 
raised the dead, praise God, who heals the sick, cleanses the lepers, raises the dead. He knew him as um, God who gives us the gifts of the spirit, gift of healing, gift of faith, words, word of wisdom, gift of prophecy, praise the name of Jesus, discerning of spirits, and the nine gifts which the Holy Spirit gives. But in order to have all these things operating effectively in your life, we need to walk in love because faith worketh by love. No love, no faith. No love, no joy. No love, no peace. No love, no prosperity. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because what is what is it gain for you? What good is it for you to gain the whole world and lose your soul? Money is temporary. Praise the name. You can get all these things. Praise God, but it will not buy you true happiness and love. You may be able to use money to buy a, post, a prostitute for a night or a few nights. Praise the name of Jesus. You may be able to use money to even buy a wife, buy a husband temporarily, but it's not going to last. Praise the name of Jesus. Only what we do for God is going to last. And God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So we give God honor and we give God glory. God is beautiful for every situation and in his presence is the fullness of joy and at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore and God will build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So many people, um, they want the power but they don't want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. They're afraid of speaking in tongues and all these things. Am I going to get a spirit from the devil? Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. No, you're not going to get a spirit from the devil if you ask God to fill you with his Holy Spirit. Let's have a quick look at um, Luke. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'll tell you where we're going. I believe it's Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11, comments in verse 9. So I say to you, Ask and keep on asking. You know, we talk, we spoke about the prayer of faith that shall save the sick. So you ask and keep on asking. Not because you prayed to be healed once and you didn't receive it. It doesn't mean that you don't continue. Sometimes healing does not occur as a miracle. Sometimes it occurs as a recovery and it takes a period of time. For example, someone may, um, you know, may have slit their wrist with a, a large um, knife or something and may have a gaping hole. Sometimes God may choose to heal that by a miracle and supernaturally it's healed. And even not even seeing a scar or anything, or sometimes it may take a period of time. Praise the name of Jesus, where the blood clots and you see the scar and it heals nicely. Sometimes it may be, especially if it's on, on a joint that you may have hurt a knee or something, um, it may take a longer period of time for you to receive that complete healing. But healing is here, praise God. God is the Lord that healeth thee. And whichever way God decides to heal you by is the main fact that you're healed. Praise the name of Jesus. You're healed by the stripes of Jesus. The race is not for the swift, but for those who endure to, to, to the end. So sometimes you may receive a miracle and sometimes you may not receive it. But so long as you receive your healing, that's all that matters. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You don't have to go boast into your friends and say, oh, it was miraculously healed by cancer or whatever it was and that person may be taking a bit longer to obtain their healing to make them feel bad and tell them oh I've got greater faith than you or you don't have any faith because you didn't receive by a miracle a year or two or three years or whatever because that is a sure way to lose your healing where is the boast in the boast is in, in God yes we can testify and encourage others <coughs> but we're not to boast and belittle others praise the name of Jesus because God has given everyone the measure of faith and um, according to how much word we hear, that will be the level of faith we have. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And it's a wonderful word. It's a powerful word. It's a redeeming word. Praise the name of Jesus. And he who the sun sets free is free indeed. So I say unto you, Luke 11, 9. Ask and keep on asking, and it shall be given you. Seek and keep on seeking and you shall find. Knock and keep on knocking and the door shall be opened to you. For everyone who asks and keeps on asking receives, and he who seeks and keeps on seeking finds, and to him who knocks and keeps on knocking, the door shall be open. For what father among you, if his son asks for a loaf of bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? 
or if you ask for an egg, we'll give him a scorpion. If you then, evil as you know, so we're evil in comparison to God, praise God, know how to give good gifts that are to their advantage to your children, sir, that are to their advantage to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask and continue to ask him? So this is showing you that you will not receive an evil spirit when you um, ask God to fill you with his Holy Spirit. You will be given the Holy Spirit. You will even be speaking in tongues. If the evidence of speaking in tongues, it might sound like gibberish or some strange language to you. You're um, speaking truths. So you're praying the perfect prayer. You're um, worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Praise the name of Jesus. And you're giving thanks well. You're praying wisdom and hidden truths when you're speaking in tongues. That's why the devil fights again tongues so much and uh, mocks it. Because when you receive the Holy Spirit, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, obviously when you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit come to live on the inside of you. But you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Like I have this cup. Okay, you can't see into it because it's not transparent. But it's only got like a little bit of water, probably about up to here. But if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you can be filled to the overflow till suddenly even overflow like a fountain and flows down on the ground. Because even so, the blessings of the Lord commands the blessings, even life forevermore. And we can find that in um, Psalm 133. So we need to be ever filled with the Holy Spirit and not drunk with wine. Praise the name of Jesus. Let's go to um, Acts 1 verse 8. Because um, there's lots of people who are um, actually perishing for a lack of knowledge because they don't know. I'll just um, tell you this little story. I had a friend of mine, Christ in Images. I think she came over to my house or something and we were having a conversation. And um, she went to a church. I'm not going to tell you what church it is or where the church is. But she went to a church and she began speaking to the pastor. And she mentioned the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit because you can use them inter interchangeably. The Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit is the same. There's nothing spooky about the Holy Ghost, praise God. Hallelujah. It's nothing like to haunt you or anything like that because the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost is a, a pure, holy spirit or Holy Ghost, praise the name of Jesus. And he comes along with his gifts, praise God, and it's the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, praise God, that comes with the um, fruit of the Spirit. And when we're filled with the Holy Spirit and we're yielding to the Holy Spirit and ungrieving Him. We can produce love because Galatians 5, 22 tells us, but the fruit of the Spirit, so we can produce that fruit and abundance. Fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance, fight against such. There is no law that can bring a charge. Praise the name of Jesus. And those who walk in the Spirit have crucified the flesh. Hallelujah. So we give God honor. And we give God glory. So the Holy Spirit is a wonderful spirit. So um, she um, spoke to the pastor and she mentioned the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. And he said, what Holy Ghost? You know, so he was ignorant and he was lacking knowledge. Hosea 4, 6 says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Let's just go to Hosea 4, 6. So let's leave Acts 1, 8 for the time being. I don't have my watch with me. <laughs> so I don't know how long I've been ministering to you. But I have to finish up because I have an appointment coming up. But nevertheless, let's continue with the word of God as I begin to conclude. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you, the priestly nation, have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you. You shall be no priest to me, seeing you have forgotten the law of your God. I will also forget your children. So um, there's consequences for disobedience, sir. There's consequences for um, ignorance, you know. Ignorance is not bliss. Praise God. What you don't know may be killing you. So... Wisdom is the principal thing, and in all of your getting, get understanding. It's good to have knowledge and to apply your knowledge. Praise the name of Jesus in faith. Because faith without works is dead. 
So we give God honor and we give God glory. So uh, many people, they want the power of the Holy Spirit. They want to heal the sick. They want to cleanse the lepers. They want to raise the dead, but they're not willing to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is, which is essential for um, effective, powerful ministry. Praise God. Hallelujah. They want to be anointed, but you have to be anointed and consecrated by the Holy Spirit and set apart for ministry. Um, receiving the Holy Spirit was so important that Jesus even um, instructed his disciples to tarry in Jerusalem so that they could receive the Holy Spirit. He forbid them from beginning their public ministry before receiving the um, baptism of the Holy Spirit. Jesus himself received the baptism of the Holy Spirit before he began his public ministry and performed his first miracle of turning the water into wine. So since the servant is not greater than his Lord, we need to be ever filled with the Holy Spirit and not drunk with wine so that we can um, have effective ministry. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. So you don't want to be a drunkard in the, pub in the um, pulpit. Um, dishonoring God and leading other people astray. Praise God. You do not use your um, pulpit to um, advertise alcohol drinking and things like that. I was once in a church and then the pastor publicly got up on his public and he was saying that he drinks beers, um, whatever, you know, he has his alcohol. Praise the name of Jesus. I mean, some people say things by mistake or whatever. I'm not condemning him for having his alcohol. But maybe it might not have been the wisest thing to get up and publicly promote alcohol by telling your uh, congregation because you might have younger believers and other people who are abstaining from um, alcoholic beverages and because you publicly promoted it on the pulpit, other people may have backslid and gone into having um, alcohol. Like even Noah, God had blessed Noah so much, praise God, and he had planted a um, vineyard and then he indulged in alcoholic beverages and then he was able, he, he, he got drunk and his son came in and saw him. And then he went and he told his other brothers, you know, he exposed the sin, yet love should cover a multitude of sin. And then the other two brothers, they went in backwards and they covered up their uh, father. And they were not cursed, but they were blessed by their father. So sometimes we can pray for other people as I pray for that pastor as well, that he will not, you know, um, publicly speak about his alcoholic drinking because it may lead another believer astray. Praise God. That's why they say when people are under the influence of um, the spirits or under the influence of alcoholic beverages, sometimes cars can crash. Sometimes people do things that they would have never done if they were not under the influence of those spirits. Some people fall into bed with a man that they would have never um, went to bed with. Some people do things they have no reckon. They have no, um, they cannot re remember what they have done under those influences. Some people go into urges and different things. So it's better to not be drunk with wine, but be ever filled with the Holy Spirit. But we thank God that Noah repented and he was forgiven. And he is a wonderful man of God. I'm not condemning anyone from drinking alcohol because people are at different stages. But I just don't think we should use our, pop, our um, pulpit to publicly promote it. So as I begin to conclude, let's go to Luke chapter 24, verse 49. Because some people are going to think, oh, if pastor is, is drinking alcohol, I can do it. It's okay. Even though they were under the conviction of the Holy Spirit not to do so. Praise the name of Jesus. And at the same time, everybody's on a different level. Some people may not be on that relationship with God that um, God is leading them to give it up. So... You know, there was a time when I drank alcohol and I wasn't at that level. And then when the Holy Spirit convicted me, then he took away the desire. So I'm not condemning anyone. So Luke chapter 24, verse 49. Because Jesus, he told them to tarry and wait to receive the Holy Spirit. And behold, I send you forth upon you what my father has promised, but remain in the city of Jerusalem until you are clothed with power from on high. So let's go to Acts 1 8. Just a few more verses and I'll conclude. Father, we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. Thank you for the sweet anointing that's in this place, Lord. Lord, I pray that you'll save everybody under the sound of my voice, Lord. 
and ask you to deliver your people from all evil. Perfect that which concerns your people. Those who are in need of healing, I pray they will be made whole right now in the name of Jesus. I send the word out right now to you and I say, be healed, be whole, receive your healing. Praise the name of Jesus. It's your faith that makes you whole. Acts 1 8. But you shall receive power, ability, efficiency, and might when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends and the very bounds of the earth. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus was anointed and consecrated with the Holy Spirit, and then he began his uh, public ministry. We give God honor and we give God glory. Let's have a look at Luke chapter 3, verses 21 to 22. That's where I believe we're um, when Jesus received the uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit. Um, maybe the Lord will permit us to continue this, this um, teaching at a later date. Luke chapter 3, verses 21 to 22. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized, and while he was still praying, the visible heavens were opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven saying, You are my son, my beloved, in you I am well pleased and find delight. Jesus himself, when he was, sorry, when he began his ministry was about 33 years of age and his the first miracle he performed was turning the water into wine father we just thank you for your word which you have spoken to us lord so powerfully thank you for the anointing on it lord we pray that um, everyone who's sick will be made whole dear lord we pray that blind eyes will be opened the lame will walk the deaf will hear the dumb will speak lord the unsaved will be saved in the name of jesus lord we pray you'll do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. Lord, we commit ourselves and the saints and everyone else into your hands. Have your way. We ask you to deliver us from evil. And I pray the wicked one will not touch us or pluck anyone out of your hands. We thank you and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The church said amen and amen. So thank you so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe and share these videos in doing so. You help me to, um, to share the gospel to a lost and dying world. And every soul that is saved will be accredited to your account. So my YouTube channel, you can just tap in Pastor Pamela D. Daniels on Google and it will bring the YouTube channel up. Subscribe and share Ephesians 6, 8. It tells us that God will reward, you know, he will reward everyone who, um, who does the work of the ministry. Let's close with Ephesians 6, 8. Knowing that for whatever good anyone does, he will...